Welcome back, everybody. Today we have a special guest. Today we have Gene Borello. We have former associate and enforcer for the Bonanno crime family. So let's bring Gene on and hear his story. Hey, Gene, how you doing? Hey, what's going on, buddy? All right. Uh, great. So you ready to do this? Yeah. All right. First off, I want to start by saying I heard about your father. I want to, uh, you know, pass on my condolences to you and your family. Sorry to hear that. Thank you, man. Yeah, it's, it's been hard, man. It, it came out of nowhere. You know, we didn't think that was going to happen and uh, pretty much died in his sleep from a heart attack. So, oh, you know. yeah, that's yeah, that that's the, the sudden thing when you're not sick. That that's rough. That that's rough. Yeah. Well, um, all right. So, Gene, where, tell tell everybody, where did you grow up? Where are you from? So I originally um, I was born in um, Brooklyn, Canarsie, um, and then I moved over to Ozone Park when I was about uh, seven years old. And I pretty much um, grew up in Ozone Park and Howard Beach. Okay. All right. And before we start with anything, let's just um, let's tell the viewers who is Fat Andy and who is Fat Andy to you? Who is Andy Ruggiano to you? Right. So Fat Andy Ruggiano is my mother's godfather. He is my great uncle. He, um, him and my, my mother and um, Andy's kids are all first cousins. Okay. So basically you grew up in the life. You grew up around this type of element your whole entire life. Oh yeah. Cousins, friends, everything. Yeah. It's just, that's all we knew. Right. It was, uh, it, that's, that's all that was around us. Okay. So let's start off with, uh, who was Gene Borello in school? Let's start like with grade school, high school, you know, who were you in school? Were you a bully? Were you bullied? Were you just a regular guy? Are uh, we into sports? Who, who was Gene in school? I like sports, but I was a problem child. You know, I'm not going to deny that. I always okay. been a problem child. Um, you know, uh, just school wasn't for me, and um, I was constantly in trouble. And I left like after the ninth grade. You know, so after the ninth grade, so you didn't you didn't graduate high school. You left after no. the ninth grade. Yeah, I did. Okay. Yeah. Now, at that point there in the ninth grade, are you um are you are you are you fucking around in the streets? Are you in are you in trouble? Like, are you starting to do things or not yet? Not at, not not at fourteen. I say at like 15, 16 years old. You could say I really was starting to become a, a criminal. Okay, so at, at 16 years old, um, we'll use your words, you started becoming a criminal. What kind of crimes are you doing? Like, what kind of things are you doing at 16? Drug, uh, selling drugs. That's what I started off with. You, you selling, you're selling drugs. Uh, okay. yeah. Do you mind if I ask, like, what are you, sell, what are you selling? Uh, I was not a major, like I said, you know, one thing about Gene is I always tell her how it is. I wasn't a major drug dealer at 16. I mean, I was selling small things, and, you know, obviously it escalated, but, like, I was – Selling, you know, weed or ecstasy, just a small amount, you know, just to make some money. And then eventually when I got into the crime world, you know, I started getting into other things. You know what I mean? And as I got older, you know, I started doing worse and worse things. So I started off as a low-level drug dealer. I used to sell drugs okay. for Hootie. I used to sell drugs for Hootie. And, you know, Hootie, okay. at the Hootie at the time was a big drug dealer. So okay. I would always go to his house and I could sell more drugs. But at the time, I didn't have the people to sell it to. Until I got older, and then I started moving more drugs for Hootie, you know, and then I became like, and I started getting into the mob world, and then I started getting into sports and loans, arm robbery, shootings, like, you know, the real bad stuff, and I just kept working my way up, you know what I mean? Wow. All right. Yeah. So, yes, yeah, so now you're, 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 you're segueing right into my next question right now. You're, you just you just brought me right into my next question here. So, Okay. What type of crimes, like besides the drugs, like what were the next crimes? Like you, you started dealing the drugs, you were playing with, you were fooling around with Hootie, you were selling some stuff for him. What, right. what came next? Like what was your next like major like step into well, like the crime family? Like what kind of well, drugs? Like what kind of crime family, you see, One thing about me is that you see a lot of people don't know this. When I was younger, I was very small. I didn't spur, <laughs> I didn't get bigger till I was older. So I was always carrying weapons. Okay. And I made I made a reputation of myself with weapons, and that's the guards on shoot. I was always fight if I had to, but I was more of a weapons guy. So um, people obviously fear weapons guys more than regular guys, uh, you know, obviously. So um, I made a reputation of myself with weapons early, and that's how I got into other crimes. So I'm like, well, I'm handy with a gun and a knife and things like that. And my friends are like, yo, all of my other friends, my other friend Bobby G, he's like, yo, we should start robbing drug dealers. And I'm like, okay. And I'm like, what do you mean? He's like, well, you know, I'm, we're learning the business. And then me and Bobby did like our first stick up together, and it worked. And, you know, uh, then we started doing more arm robberies and then we became professionals at it. And so, then, okay, let, let, anyway, let me, let me and then before you. you know it, before you know it, when anyone got a score, we're the go-to guys to do it now. 
Well, let, let's go back to, uh, one step here. You started you started robbing drug dealers. Now, right. um, what what kind of scores are they? Like, how how are you robbing them for their drugs and their money, or are you just taking yeah, the money? Yeah, we take everything, right? Okay. And, you know, we were going to their stash houses. Like I said, if, if we didn't have to do an armed robbery and we could just watch the guy leave the stash house, we'll go in there and take the drugs, the money, whatever he's got in there. And my, like I said, we're 19 years old, 20 years old. We're kids. You know what I mean? And, you know, I mean, we didn't act like kids. You would think we were 30 years old because we grew up fast because, you know, we're all related. Sure. You know, we're watching these guys make big money. They're all shooting, killing people, you know? So it's like, you know, okay, so we're acting like we're 30 years old when we're 19, 20 years old. We're driving nice cars. We got money, you know? So basically, uh, we grew up very fast. And we're going for the gusto now at 20 years old. You know what I mean? Like, because <laughs> we walked our way up, and now we're sure. going for the keys. You know what I mean? Because... You know, you start thinking who the fuck you are. And, you know, we're, you know, making moves, serious moves now, you know? Real scores. Jewelry well, store. I, I, got a, I got a two-part question for you. We're still going to stick with the drug dealers for now. Right. When, did you ever rob the same guys twice? Like, do you go back to them after you rob them? Or, yeah. or oh, you're not? Yeah. You <laughs> Listen, me and my partner, Ronnie Manns, me and Ronnie Manns were, uh, this is later on when I came home in 2010, me and Ronnie Manns were legitimately, when they see us, they would hide because they knew... <laughs> <laughs> that we were hunting drug dealers all the time. So everyone knew when me and Ronnie Mans were around, they're like, oh, man, they're definitely looking up. They're up to no good. You know, because we, we literally, we robbed, this kid in, we robbed this kid from Long Island like three times. I mean, we would just see him and just take oh. whatever you had on. <laughs> it was yeah, I, I don't mean well. to laugh. But I don't mean to laugh, but that's pretty funny. <laughs> that's pretty, we that's pretty making, funny. We will make... We, we were making mockeries out of people. Let me just be honest with you. Drug dealers, you know, all these fake gangsters, you know. Look, I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna be honest with you. Um, I'm a little older than you. I'm 55, so right. I was never a wise guy, a tough guy. But like I said, I'm from Ozone Park my whole life. I know people. I I hear a lot of things on the street. When I was in my early teens and mid teens, Johnny A Light was like a fucking madman. So right. the guys who say, you know, he's maybe he embellishes, he he stretches his truths once in a while, but that guy was a fucking maniac. Everyone and, knows you know, that. There's, there's, you know, and a lot of guys like to discredit him and say, oh, you know, you didn't do this. You didn't do that. You were lying. You, that guy's name was fucking known like as a maniac. No, wait, that I'm guy sorry. Was a he, sorry, he didn't shoot 50 guys. It was 40. Sorry. 40, sorry. yeah. So, yeah, sorry. yeah. Sorry. I, no, sorry. I, I, I got my math wrong. I made up um, on 10. I'm sorry. I shot 40, not 50. Sorry. Like, come on. We, we, we used to say like, you know, when I was 15 or 16, A-Light was probably about 18 or 19 at the time. And we would say like stuff like, if a light was coming after you, not only do you don't hide in your house, hide in someone else's fucking house because he's kind of come to your house. You know what I mean? Yeah, so that's he, uh, yeah. He had a mean so, reputation. He really did. Yeah, and and it's you know it, it 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 caught up with him later on, but we'll we'll touch on that again later. So let's stick with this drug dealer thing right now. Let me ask you now, Gene. You robbed the same guy three times. Say you robbed other guys multiple times. If you like if you get beat down, like if you guys, if they fight back and something happens to you guys now, can you go to somebody or does nobody want your back? Like, is this, nobody wants to fuck around with you because you're doing drug dealers. That's bullshit. So what the mob does is this, this is the best, this is, you know, this trick. So they'll pretend like they're going to help you because they'll take it to a sit down and say, it's not drug money. It's loan shark money. I've done it before where okay. drug dealers, we were extorting them basically. And they, they would run to somebody and say, well, look what he's doing. Well, we can't shift for you. But then we'll try to get in touch with him and say, well, you got to pay, but it's drug money. And then we'll say, we'll make up a whole story just to get money out of them and say, oh, no, it's loan shark money. And then we'll make him go to a sit down and we'll have Vinny, who's the best actor of all time, a Sarah, just throw him some money and he'll make it like he actually gave the guy the money. And, you know, <laughs> he'll make it like he gave the guy the money. And, uh, <laughs> And he'll he'll go to the sit down and oh, and win and we'll get the mo free money basically for no reason you know it's all it's all, right, all so just that... about it's all just about us honestly bullying people that's what we were doing you know what I'm saying it, it, that's really what yeah. it was you know yeah yeah that that's definitely so what um... we were doing that a lot you know and not like the civilians but we were muscling guys that we felt like shouldn't have the money and we would impose our will on them that's the truth you know. Yeah, that that's basically. Hey, look, it's a dog eat world. It's the it's the, the only the strong survive. That's basically, right. Uh, you know. Right. You so know? now you're doing you're doing you're doing drug dealers. You're doing some other things now. When is the first? How old are you when you get arrested the first time? We actually not arrested. Like I mean, where you do some time? Like we actually lock you up. Like how old are you oh. when you get locked up? Yeah, I was eighteen. Eighteen. And where where yeah. do you wind up? Where do you wind up? Rikers. Yeah, Rikers Island. Yeah. Mm. And how long? You, how long in the Rikers for? Now at eighteen, right. are you still a, are you still a juvenile? 
Are you a minor yeah, 18? Or are you... Yeah, I was in the fucking adolescence, yeah. That's even, that's even worse. Yeah, it was horrible. Yeah, it was crazy. I was in the so adolescence. Long... For like, I, I was in that jail for like almost a year. A year? Yeah. I did, so I, you... see, people, people don't know. I did like, I did a total, I, mean, I did a total, I'll tell you right now, I did one, I did 10 months, 12, I did 22, I did a total of 42 months in Rikers Island in my whole life. And that's like the worst of the worst. I did a ton of Rikers Island time. I did hard time. You know what I mean? Rikers Island is the worst time. And I, it's like slow death in there. It's nonstop violence, you know. So I did a lot of jail time. I did over 10, I did like over 11 and a half years, but 42 months of it was in Rikers Island. You did 11 and a half years total? Total, yeah. And how old are you? 38, 39? I'll be 39 in June, yeah. And you did 11 years? A little over 11, yeah. That's, it's almost a 30 of life. That's, uh, yeah. Wow. So yeah, that will get, that will, we'll touch on that a little bit later too there. So that's, uh, so, you know, here, here's, I think what a lot of people want to know, of course, like the mob is like this secret society. And, um, right. I heard, I heard a lot of your stories and stuff like that. Explain, tell me like a, the regular day in your life, you wake up, you take a shower, you eat, you're out the door. Now this is when you're in the life. Where are you going? What are you doing? Like, what do you guys do during the course of a day from morning to night? What do you do? Like starting in the morning? Like what, what's your routine? Post Ronnie in jail or when he comes out? Which way? Uh, well, when he's home. When, when he's home. When he's home, you're going to see him or whatever. Got to be on his hip. That's it. So, like, yeah. what would you just do? Like, on a, would, are he's at his house? Are he's going to see people? Like, what do you Whatever like, the fuck he needs us to do. He, well, me, I was his 24-7 guy, so I was with him constantly. So, if he's around, when we were younger, me and Bobby would be with him constantly when we were with them. And then when he went to jail, when I came home before him, I was always reporting or doing something that he needed done. Or if not, I'd be with my friends all day. If they need me, they call me, and I drop everything I'm doing and go. I had no schedule. You know, I don't have a job. Okay. You know, I, I'm a loan shark. I'm a bookmaker. I'm an arm robber. You know, I'm a henchman. If they need me to beat guys up, whatever they need me to do, they call me. Gene, Ronnie sent the message. Go deal with this guy. Go do that. Go pick up this money. All right. You know, and that's all it was. That was my job. Now, now let me ask you this. If back in the day, when in your heyday, Okay, you're making how much you make in a week in your head when things are good. How much you make in a week when things were good. My best years of my life was from 2011 to 2013. That was the most money I ever seen in my life. Okay, and can, making, can we, yeah, we can share a making, number? Oh, yeah, I was making 30 to 40,000 a month. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, all right. So at, at this point, you're making 30 to 40,000 a month now. Do you does Gene Barello ever have a job or you've just been a, a, of like no, you, you've never worked? No. Okay. So, so this is what you did. Okay. So now, all right. <laughs> now, nice. what, what was your like? What was your crime of choice? Like, did you like beating people? Like, was that what you think? Like, did you like like enforcing or did you like robbing? Like, what was your thing? I loved the arm rob. The arm robbery. That was your yeah, thing. The arm robber. That was my thing. Wow. Yeah. yeah. So let me ask you, like, what was uh, what would be considered a, a big school? Like, you doing jewelry stores? You doing yeah, like uh, ju- we were hitting jewelry stores. We were hitting anything. You know, it depends if the money was there and it was right. You know, like I have said many times, we hit a jewelry store in broad daylight. We tied the people up in the store in broad daylight. Took the whole store. You know what I mean? In broad, broad daylight, daylight. Walking, out, walking out with laundry bags. Yeah. Of jewelry. Now, what do you do in the meantime if someone if someone walks in while this is going on? You robbing them too, or do you just like you chase them out, or you rob them too? Well, it depends if they come in and we don't see them. We'll just tell them, you know, go. It never happened, but we would obviously probably zip tie them too, and you know, until we're done, then go. You know. Now, but w- would you rob the civilians also, or no? We just want the jewelry, and the, we just want the jewelry, and you that's just want it. The, okay, yeah. so 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 anybody who walked in wouldn't be at risk of harm. They might get tied no. up, and you wouldn't you wouldn't harm them. No, because you know, you guys, you just get a bad rap. Like, um, I remember when you get, when you were first coming home. Uh, the local people were saying, uh, you know, this guy's an animal. He's going to keep doing this. And, right. and, you know, and like I said, honestly, oh, I, I, was, I, I was robbing their, I was robbing their loan shark money. They're mad. Because <laughs> <laughs> it almost sounded like people were afraid that you were going to start, do, like you were doing Listen, you got civilian to home invasions. I'm, I'm going to be honest with you. The problem is this. <laughs> the area got washed up. So I was a guy that was extremely dangerous. So they don't want a guy out, out like me, rat or not rat, because I didn't need the mafia to be tough. I was just a nut. You understand? So yeah. it's not like you could just walk up to me and abuse me. It's not happening. I'm not one of these guys you're just going to abuse. Yeah. It's not going to happen ever in my life. So yeah. basically, 
And I don't look for trouble. I didn't. I wasn't. But you know, you're not gonna walk up to Gene and say what you want and do what you want. It's not happening. I don't need the mafia to be a bad guy. I was a bad guy regardless, even before the mafia. So, you know, people hated that about me, and I was fearless. I had no fear. You know what I mean? So, it sucks for the mob day, modern day. Back in the '80s, you'd have a hit team try to kill me every day. And nowadays, oh. they they haven't busted a grape. They ain't doing no. Sh- they're not doing that. Stuff. I was doing old school stuff, so they didn't want to deal with a guy like me. They don't want to get shot at, shot, beat up, stabbed. They rather just fist fight a guy. That's not what I was doing, you know. <laughs> you you were you were born in the wrong era, my friend. You should have been born thirty that's, years ago. But I would have been dead. They would have killed me. Robin like, Wise guys and shit. They would have fucking executed me. Yeah, that's, that's, oh, and we're gonna we're gonna touch on that too. We're we're gonna touch on that also. Right. So right. let me ask you this: like, it's like you. It's like this. I'm gonna be honest with you. It's like you yes. suck. And I'm not comparing myself to these people. No. They were way worse than me. But it's like it's like you sticking. Tommy Karate in the modern day. It's not going to work. Yeah. It's yeah, not going to work. True. He's going to terrorize everybody. You know what I'm saying? It's like you stick in a real deal guy with these clowns. It's just not going to work out. They're all herbs, a lot of them. You know what I mean? They just want to go, oh, you know who my uncle is? Forget about it. Uh, you know, coffee, cake, sit down bullshit. I'm not with that. Take it to the street. They don't want people like that no more. You know so you're I mean? not, um, you're not, you're not, um, like you just said, you know, these, uh, you know, whatever you call them just now, these these the, the modern day guys, not my uncle, this not so that these guys, you're not afraid of none of these guys. These guys don't Well, you think about it, ready? When's the last okay. time the mob when's the last time there was an indictment for a murder that happened in the modern day for the mafia? Give me one. True. Yeah, true. The only one was the was the Gambino boss, and that wasn't a mob hit. That was a that freak. That a was hit. A, Mikey Melly is the last confirmed murder for the mob that was twenty twelve. Okay. Wow, so it's ten years ago. Eleven, 11 years, ago. years ago, they haven't killed a guy in eleven years. Well, let me the ask mob you. Is dead. Back in the eighties, there was like six bodies a day. You understand what I'm telling you? It's way different. Maybe even more than that. You know what I mean? It was. It's so dead. They don't order murder no more. They don't order violence like that no more. It's dead. There's nobody coming up. They're all third generation, washed up dudes that got no balls, barely <laughs> fight. You know what I mean? It's over with. You know, my era was the last of the hurrah, and I always say that. The 80s babies who were still running around like lunatics. A lot of my friends are dead, serving life, or cooperated. It was the same house for all the areas that were really doing shit. You know what I mean? That's well, let me, let me ask you this, bud. Do you, do you, think, do you think it's more the, the, the guys of today, and like I said, like, I, I don't really know anything about the guys of today, to be honest with you. Um, even when you were running around, um, I really was, you know, I was, I was married, you know, family life and stuff like that. So I wasn't even out with my friends on the street and stuff like that. But um, right. You think, you think it's more of the guys today that they're not pussies? It's just they don't want murder. They don't want murder. They don't want the no, you know, the, the rap. I mean, I'm talking about they never done anything. A lot of them. And I'm gonna be. I'm being real with you, bro. Oh, I know a lot of the guys that are guys now, and everyone's just like, "What? Like, hey, kids, when you come out the house, what it is is this? You you got you got to you got to understand something. If you have, let's say, back in the '70s, right? You have a wise guy who's a real deal guy. Now he has right. a kid, right? And he might be born, and he might be born in like the late seventies, right? And then he has the kid. You gotta understand, these guys got a lot of money, right? So they're not gonna teach their kids to be savages because they're gonna make them privileged kids. True, sure, sure. Right? So they're not gonna be hungry. They're not gonna be doing things that we were doing that when we were hungry. We Good want point. money. They got money. So what's the reason why you join the mafia for money? If you got it already, what are you chasing? That's true. What are you chasing? That, that is true. Think about so it. Me- we were chasing the dollar. The wise guy shit, yeah, we like that too, but we were chasing the money. All I was chasing was money. If I was born with a million dollars, the banana crime family don't know Gene Barello. You understand? Really? Is that is that what? is that a fact? So so you That's don't you don't think so, but you don't think even with if, if 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 you had money as a kid, you don't think just your your violent nature would have brought you like never mind the the banana family. We're talking about the Barello family. You would been you would have been your own mouth. You don't think you would have been uh No, no. No, I would have been just a tough kid that, you know, might get into fights, but you won't hear about Gene doing this for Ronnie, this doing that for Vinny. I did it because Ronnie was a multimillionaire. I knew I would be get rich with him, and I knew I could get in with him because I had a big set of balls, and that's what he liked. And, that, and I used that to my advantage. I said, I'll take care of everything if you don't worry. And I became his main guy. And they loved me because they seen I was a nut. I was a wild dude. And, you know, they, they latched on to me. You know, me and his nephew were fucking bad. You know what I mean? And like I said... I wouldn't have been like that. If I grew up and I had a ton of money and I was good, the Banana Crime family don't know Gene Barello. I don't care who I was related to. I was chasing the dollar. That's it. Now let me ask you a question. I, I know the um I know I know the answer already, but um my viewers probably won't know. 
Um, Fat Andy's with the Gambinos. He, well, he's that, he's see, your that, uncle. See, and, that was, and that was the beef, you know, they were complaining. Because I was originally supposed to be with Al Truchio on them. And, um, and Mikey Rockaforty. He, he was always trying to grab me. Mikey Rock. The Rockaforty's love me. And um, um, the problem was is that my cousin Anthony was a cooperator with the Gambinos. And I knew I would never prosper over there because he told on the Carrazos. And that's like royalty. And I, I knew when he cooperated that I knew I was fucked in the Gambino. They would have blocked me for life from getting made. They would have blocked me forever. They do that. The Carrazos block you, you block for life. They blocked Todd the Balka. He never got straightened out. And then Todd was supposed to get straightened out multiple times. And Jojo Carrazo hated him, blocked him. he go on the list. They knock him down every time. Uh, wow. Big, Louie, Big Louie was trying to get Todd straightened out. And Big Louie was a captain. He couldn't get it done because Jojo wow. had blocked. You know what I'm saying? So it's like when they block you to Carrazos, you're blocked for life. That's it. Now, did you, being that your cousin cooperated, did that, did that have an effect? Like, did, did people look at you differently, um, I mean, like even in your own family? I mean, no, but it's just like they know he's my cousin. And how am I going to prosper with the people that he told on? Yeah. You know what I mean? I, you know, it made no sense. You know, I didn't trust it. And I knew with the Bonanno family, they didn't care. Ronnie and, them, and Vinny Opaline said, we don't care what your cousin did. That's over there. Okay. You know, we're not worried okay. about it. You know? Well, now, let me ask a question. Who, who were you? Not, not that you were scared of either one of them, but who, who was, how can I put this? Who was a scarier guy in the mob, Ronnie or Vinny? Who, who was the guy who, I mean, I know who's more respected because, you know, R uh, Vinny's an old timer. But well, that's not true. Ronnie has really? a lot of respect. Oh, uh, you see, people, what? people undermine Ronnie G. Ronnie G would have been the perfect boss for the family. You know, if you speak to the FBI, you got to understand some. In the, he could have took over the family. Uh, it was talked about that him and Anthony Pepitone were trying to take the family over. Now, let me tell you something. You got to understand some. Ronnie was worth $35 million at one time. Ronnie okay. had nothing but tough guys around him. Ronnie was a tough guy himself. All Ronnie oh, was had to do, I remember when I remember when Ronnie became acting captain and he had heard word that guys didn't want to become acting captain. He met up with the guys and he says, I want to know who the fuck said that. They're like, no, we never said that. <laughs> Literally, I was there. I was there with my own. I seen it. I heard it with wow. my own ears and seen it. So well, people sleep on Ronnie. Ronnie was very respected. You know, well, I just want to interrupt you for a second. I, I, I wasn't saying anything bad about Ronnie. I was just saying yeah. that the, the gigantic reputation in the neighborhood that Vinny Asaro has, you know, that, well, that he's, you know, and like I said, he's in the shadows of his uncle because his uncle's such a mafia, was a mafia icon, you know, Latanza, captain under, you know, he got strained out by Carmine Galente. He goes back third generation. You know, he got, he killed everybody in the Latanza hit case. You know, you know, this guy got a lot of shit, but at the end of the day, Ronnie was no slouch, you know, even Jerry Asaro. Jerry Asaro is one of the most respected guys in the Bonanno family. He's not a violent guy, but he's very okay. respected. He had, you okay. know, he would do what he had to do, but he wasn't like Ronnie. Ronnie was much more tougher than him. Ronnie was more like Vinny than his own kids. Really? Well, yeah. let, let me ask you this then. Let me ask you this. You're, you're a baseball fan, right? Yeah. Okay. So if, if the mob has a Hall of Fame, right, if we have a Hall of Fame in the mob, Vinny is a first ballot Hall of Famer for sure. Vinny's, oh, yeah. Vinny, you know, now let, let's touch on. He's on the, listen, he's on the level of John Gotti. It's just that he's not as popular. And well, actually, sorry, his case had more media attention than any mob case ever in history. You know that, right? Really? Oh, that, the Lafonte Heights trial had more media attention than any mob case ever. Now, okay, now let me ask you this then. In in the movie Goodfellas, I guess Vinny wasn't involved because he was still active on the street, so he his name couldn't have been right. That would have been an admission of guilt if he if they mentioned Vinny in the movie. Well, they tried using that to his defense, saying that Henry Hill never brought his name up. But Henry Hill didn't know who's involved because Henry Hill wasn't even involved. That's the whole thing. Okay. Henry Hill wasn't involved. Jimmy Burke didn't involve him in that score. He just gave him a little money because it's his friend. He didn't know who did what. He wasn't involved in it. So how could he give okay. the names up? Okay. Let me, hey, let me ask you a question. You're familiar with this name. Then we'll get right back on track. Um, I'm actually going to, I'm actually going to interview this guy. But you're, you're familiar. You're a little bit young. For, but this Anthony Ramundi, you know this guy? Did you please see? Don't please don't interview him. <laughs> just, listen, just on the 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 entertainment value alone, it's like I, I there's so many holes I want to poke in the story. It's it's like Bro. I mean the guy went from it's, killing the Pope. Every just every go talk to guy. Gianni Russo. Go talk to Gianni Russo. It's the same thing. You're, 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 you're right. talking to a, a guy writing a script. That's all you're doing. Well, clearly he has three books. This guy and and but. Um, you know, my, my, my thing with him is, and I, I would have to ask him myself, is you did everything, you orchestrated the Lufthansa heist, you killed the fucking Pope, 
every made guy, captain, and fucking boss in the history of the fucking mob is your uncle or your cousin. And yet Bro, there's not a guy on the asshole. street who will, and there's not a guy on the street who will vouch for you. Not one. Bro, this guy's no an guy. asshole. Bro, listen, this guy's a certified asshole. I would never even don't even put him on your show. He went on Vlad because <laughs> no one knew Vlad TV, no one knew what his deal. This guy's talking all this crazy shit. Killed a hundred guys. Listen, he's an asshole. I would never put him on your show. It's embarrassing. He knows show he goes on all the time. Stack show. It's like a nothing. You know, he's yeah, to this guy now. Yeah, that's you know the, what I'm saying? Bro, uh, he just he's real you know who the guys are really involved and you know the ones, you know, that were really out yeah. there with, with federal cases that were actually a part of mafia and were with people and on surveillance of FBI. Where's his FBI surveillance photos? I mean, if this guy's killing people, all this stuff, FBI has no surveillance pictures of him? I'm, I, in, like I, a thousand I, FBI, I'm in like a thousand surveillance pictures. Where the fuck is his surveillance pictures? It's true. I didn't I didn't even know who this guy was till that Vlad video. I saw that Vlad video. I was like, who? Now, when I first saw it, I was like, who the fuck is this guy? And I actually, and like I said, I, I'm not going to sit here and bash this guy. Um, but he's a he's a combination of wannabe John Gotti and Andrew Dice Clay at the same time. It's like he's a fucking <laughs> he's head against Bro, you know, I can't like, even talk to him. I can't. I can't talk to him. I swear I can't. I can't even look at him. He's so comical with that. I mean, he looks like that mustache. What is he, a Hell's Angel? I don't know what he is. Uh, I can't look at him. I can't. And, and I know it. And the cigar and the... Oh my God! I can't look at no. him. I'm sorry. Now let me ask you this, Gene. Let's let let let's that that it was it was funny, but um, was there ever a crime or a robbery that you wanted to do but you just didn't do it? Was there ever like did you have that thing that you were planning and just never got around yeah. to doing it? Well, yeah, we were gonna rob Joe Machino. F- fuck me. When he, <laughs> when he became a cooperator, though. So wait, before he became a co- you were gonna rob him before he became a co- cooperator after. After what happened oh, was, okay. I was, thinking, I was the call, uh, you got to say a guy in our crew, Mike Padavona, somebody that related to a wise guy in our crew, put the safe in Joe's house and knew that the gold bars were in there. So Vinny and Sarah kept telling us that if the gold bars are in there, you got to go fucking get them. But the agents already took them, so there was no point. He had found out they weren't in there no more. Wow! Now, now so that they wanted let me tell to you go get the gold bar. There was like seven million dollars in gold bars in there. See, now, I'm glad I asked that question because I don't think that question was – I never heard you answer that question before, I don't think. And now that's something that I've never heard. Now, that's information right there. That story was confirmed by a random friend of mine. That's not bullshit. <laughs> a guy that's just in the street. A guy that's in the street right now, and he's not a cooperator. And he had brought that story up to somebody I know and says, Gene never talks about we're going to rob Joe Mcino because that was a no thing. We were going to hit Joe. And I actually forgot that. I told the feds about it. But I had forgot to tell a story online about it. Or my, they took it out of my book. They edited the shit out of my book. It was in my book. They took it out. And, I actually um, I just ordered it. I actually just ordered the book yesterday, so it's gonna it's it's coming on Friday. So I actually, ordered- I'm happy about it. But the original copy was so much better. But whatever, you know, maybe I'll release the original. We'll see. But now you see, I'm 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 so let's so technically I was the first person online to ask you that question about yeah. that. All right, yeah. so that that's that's pretty cool because I, I was curious, like you know, everybody always has that. Um, I wish I would have fucking list whether it was you know I should have I mean, married we, this I girl. Mean, I mean, we sat on Brinks trucks. We sat. We, me and my robbery team were vicious, so we were just trying everything. You know, Brinks trucks, all kind of shit. We didn't give a fuck. We were cowboys. We were just trying to you know get bulk some money. You know. Well, let me ask you this then. Let's let's go to the opposite end of what I just asked you. Was there a score or a crime you committed that you wish you didn't do? Yeah, but you said not to bring it up. So <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, 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 good. Let's move. Let's let's move on. Um, that, that's good. <laughs> so I'm gonna I'm gonna ask you this now. You don't <laughs> very well. You set, yourself, you set yourself up for that, right? <laughs> but that's it. Yeah, you know what? And I didn't think that would be it. But yes, you're right. And I'm not gonna edit that. But that that was good. Good good for all you. Right. Bad for me. Um. All, all right. right. So so you said now you guys wouldn't. Uh, oh, what happened here? We lose you. Oh, we just lost. We just lost Gene. Yeah. Oh, there you go. Okay. Yeah. yeah. All right. So now <laughs> you're right. You you win that one. I lost that one. So Gene won. <laughs> Anthony nothing. All right. So, um, let me ask you a question. Would, is there ever a case where you would do a robbery against a civilian? Is there ever? Was there ever like something that? Um, I made it clear. What happens is this. So if we're targeting a crime figure, a civilian might be involved, but we're not targeting them. So it's like if we go. And home invade a gangster or a drug dealer. There might be someone in the house that isn't a gangster or a drug dealer that we got to detain and tell them, you know, shut the fuck up until we're out of here, basically. That's all. So basically, the, it'll be collateral damage. It would, they wouldn't be the hit. They wouldn't be the mark. You wouldn't be going after the them. Mark. 
Okay. Never the mark. But I always put it like this, and I'm not justifying. You know what your husband does. You know what your boyfriend does. It's part of the game. <laughs> that, you know what I'm saying? That's, that's pretty, you know what? You, I had told somebody's stupid. girlfriend one time, you know where the fucking money is. Don't play stupid. Where is it? Okay, yeah. You know what's in here. Like, let's not play dumb here. You know? That's, you're not a, you you're know, a civilian now when the cops come, but before when you spend it as gangster money and his loan shark money, you're not a civilian. You know what I'm saying? You know where it is. Like, stop. You know what I mean? You know, you I, know? I think... I think you missed your calling in life. I think you went the wrong route. You should have went into fucking comedy, to be honest with you. You really should have. Everyone, everyone well, says that. I, I really want to be a stand-up comedy. Everybody wants you know, to be a stand-up comedian. If 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 you came and if you came and robbed me with that attitude, I would I would be, at least be amused while you were fucking robbing me. I would be at least like, hey, at least the guy's fucking funny. Um, I don't know what I could, I don't know what I would give you for the robbery. I mean, uh, but I'd be like, you fucking made me laugh. That's for sure. All right, so let's um. Let's go. Now, let me ask a question. Do you ever, you know what? Fuck it. Because I, it, it may, your answer may lead back to what I don't want to talk about. So I'm just going to cross this question off here. Let's just go. Yeah. Okay. Get out of there. When it comes to, when it comes to hanging out now, um, you're, you're a banana guy. Right. Now, is the, do you have other friends from different families? Are you allowed to hang out with them or are you, Fuck is yeah. that Listen, like, from, you know, I wanted to say this to my, I got along better with guys in other crews than my own crew. It's always okay. like that. You know what I mean? Okay. I have more friends in the Gambino family than the banana family. That's just <laughs> okay. what it is. That's how it is. You know, I remember now, guys back in the day, my uncle was telling me that they thought Vinny Star was a Gambino because he's at my uncle's social club so much. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's the way it nice. is. You know, they were confused about Sarah. Like, people were like, is he Gambino? He's always at Fat Andy Social Club, you know, because he's best friends with all of them. Skinny Dom, the Karate, those are all his best friends. So, you know, the same thing with me. I have more friends that were in the Gambino family than the, the Bonato family. So that's, it, it's okay. But so, like, like, um, like your, your, your bosses would not have a problem if you were hanging out. Like, they don't, they don't really, or they will well, say something. Ronnie used to complain because they were all calling me from jail. I took care of all of them. When they got locked up in 2011, I was legitimately the only guy taking care of Todd, the Rock of 40s. Uh, uh, Al, I would see them send money. I was good like that, you know. So he didn't like that. He's like, you know, why are you doing that? He's like, oh, I'm friends with them. He goes, ah, don't do that. You know, he was getting a little mad about that, you know. Yeah, the the, the Rock of Forties. Um, they had a cousin, Frank. The father was Lewis. I was really good friends with him. Yeah, he um, passed away. Frankie the Bug. Yeah, yeah, I was really close with them. The Rock. Jen, remember, the daughter was also married to my cousin as a kid with him. Yeah. Oh, Jennifer. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I know Jennifer when she was a little She's baby. Babysit me. She used to babysit me. Yeah. yeah, Jennifer and, and Frankie and I was I was very close with the mother and 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 the father to when he was home, <laughs> you know when yeah, this was around. The passed away too. Janet, yeah, uh, there's Janet, no, Janet. Yeah, Janet. There's there's nobody. She has nobody. Fra- Frankie's gone. Janet's gone. Lewis is gone. You know. The, yeah. I I, feel, I ran into I ran into Jennifer about right before the pandemic and um. Okay. And it was like you know she was crying and stuff like that. I haven't seen her in years, and she's like I have nobody. I felt you know I felt so bad for her, but yeah, um, she has, you know, she has a she has a kid with my cousin Joey. Okay. My father's That's brother. Son. Yeah. But they, they were, you know, I'm going to make you laugh. Her brother, Frankie, back in the day, we're talking about the early 80s. Now, at this point, I'm not even familiar with John Gotti, to be honest with you. I'm 14, <laughs> 15 years old. John Gotti is not, he's not even a captain yet. You know what I mean? So his name really, I mean, he's in the streets. Right. But Frankie Rock tells me and my family one day, he's like, the next boss is going to be John Gotti. And I was like, who the fuck is that? What? John Gotti. <laughs> and it's, it was like, out of nowhere, boom, the fucking, this guy starts hitting the streets. His fucking name is everywhere. The Castellano hit comes, and I'm like, this fucking kid had a crystal ball. But, um, That's crazy. <laughs> all right, so for the next question, you're making 10, 10 15,000 a week, whatever you're making, right? You're making 40,000 a month or something, you said. And what yeah, do you, what do you do? Short time, though. I mean, for my most part, okay. I always do like, honestly, like I said, one thing about me, I never bullshit in what I make. Before, you know, I, I one time I was making 3,000 a week. 2000 4000 My high was like, for a year or so, was big money. I was making a half million a year. I was doing a lot. Yeah. Hey, look, I'm, I'm not the IRS. I'm just throwing a number out there because I'm just going to no, work into the next like you know, Yeah, fuck, yeah that, that's like, fine. Yeah, you know? Like, you know, that's just the truth, you know? Now, the, the reason I, I just threw a number around was, did you did you save any of this money or are you spending it every... Are you going week to week? Are you just blowing this shit in clubs on women and fucking... Are you just going crazy with this money? If I made sixty, I spent a hundred. Okay, how about that? <laughs> All right. So, so as, right. as far as as far as putting some of this quick money and this easy money away for a rainy day, that we didn't do. You just it didn't. It, you thought this would this ride would never end. You thought this would never go on end. forever. You think, you think it's never gonna end, bro? Yeah, that's uh, so. Uh, let me ask you a question, Gene. What yeah. what crime what crime did you commit 
that you got locked up for that that they that they they actually flipped you for? Like, what was the crime that you got? Um, you know, they that you got me, caught. Right, so they had me on a bunch of stuff. I just didn't know. So they were just gonna lock me up in separate places. I kind of caught on. Um, they, they had locked me up in the state for this weird conspiracy of that didn't make sense. And my lawyer kept saying, "This case don't make sense. This is like a federal case." And he's like. This don't make sense. And then I got my discovery. And he goes, yeah, you're in trouble. It was a 10,000-page wiretap indictment. And, you know, this is federal. He goes, this is going federal. This is not. And he goes, you're like 3,500 pages of the 10,000. Oh, my God. So I then knew I was railroaded. And then Florida came to rearrest me for something else. And then I knew I had a federal indictment. So you figure that out. I'm a predicate persistent in the state already. I have multiple gun charges now. They locked me up on conspiracy to selling guns, attempted uh, home invasion. That's my state case, uh, like seven charges. Florida locks me up for conspiracy to robbery in the first in a jewelry store. And then Florida, uh, the feds are coming down with conspiracy to commit murder, attempted murder, home invasions, arsons, assaults, you name it. I got it. Right. Lone so basically, if, if, if you don't cooperate, basically you're talking 100, you're, you're looking at 100 years. Well, like I said, they never gave me a number except for one time uh, Lindsay had told me I could give you 22 years just for your guns because I had so many gun convictions. She goes, I could have oh, just gave you 22 years just for your guns, she said, because it was my third gun conviction. And then I had multiple gun sales. And she goes, never mind your other Kate charges. I could have just gave you 22 years. I always said that it was always the ballpark of me copping out to like 35 years, 36 years, something oh. like that for everything. Yeah. All right. So let, let me ask you this then. How, how long are you? How long are you in jail before you decide to cooperate? Like how long? Uh, how long? Sixteen. Uh, sixteen months. They took me out in nineteen. Wow. So you you do sixteen months. So at this point now, are you, are you working with the lawyers? Like you think you're going to fight this and beat this? So is that what? No, what are you having? I knew I was. I knew I was fucked because um, you can't beat wiretaps, really. You know what I mean? So. Um, I was just trying to see if I could discredit my cousin. He was wearing a wire on me. I was trying to figure out things, but I knew I had no outs. But this is the thing. They didn't want me. Like, I was just their piece for Ronnie. And they wanted him bad. And they wanted Vinny. And they knew that I was a direct contact to these two big guys. Directly, very tight with them. So they basically said, you know, yeah, if you're not going to cooperate, we're going to put you in jail. But, like, we'd rather you talk. You know what I mean? Basically, like, you know, we want you to cooperate. That was the whole thing from the beginning. They just want me to cooperate. You know? Now, now let me ask you this. Would, would, would they, like, trump the, would they trump the charges up for you, like, to make it look worse than it is so you do you do cooperate? Like, are they, they going to throw on, like, a thousand fucking they're charges? That, saying, they're doing that right now on my probation violation. Doing, well, we're going right right to we're gonna get to We're going to get to that. That's that's uh, my next up. blatantly lying on me on probation right now. Blatantly. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, we're gonna yeah. touch on that. We we have a few more questions. Then we're gonna hit that, and then we're gonna be. Then we're gonna just uh, we're gonna wrap up. We have a few more to go here, but um, let me ask you this now. If well, before okay, if Ronnie Ronnie's gonna come out of jail sooner or later, twenty twenty nine. Okay, let me ask you a question. What happens uh, now? Do, do you're in Florida right now, right? Yeah, you're okay. Now uh, I guess you're making a new life in Florida. Or whatever does does when he comes out of jail, does he come to Florida? He looking nah. for you is nah. no, 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 no. And I, you, you said on a different show and uh, correct me if I'm misquoting you. Um, you might've borrowed like long-term borrowed a couple hundred thousand from him. Yeah. I got him for a lot. Now he, that's not the, he's not coming looking for that. Nah. You know what I'm Ronnie's a two-time Rico conviction. Third one's natural life. Okay. So basically yeah. he'll, Ronnie he'll, has he'll just, Rico. Ronnie has, Ronnie has two Rico convictions. So he's got he's got to bite the bull on this one. He has to take this if he want. It, he can't let pride get in the way here. He has to he just say he, he catches he catch any kind of another third Rico case. They could give you life naturally just off the third Rico case. All right. So that's um. All right. And as far as um, as far as anybody else, like you, you, I know you were in Howard Beach for a long time when you came home, and you know, and you went to Florida. But have you seen or run into anybody like eye to eye on the streets? And you did. You passed them, like, say, like, in New Park. Or so, you know, you've come and nobody says shit to you? <laughs> nobody. No, I nobody. was right next to Blake. Oh, we just lost uh, Gene here for a second. We're going to get him back. Hello? Yeah, I, I lost you there. 
Oh, uh, you said you were right next to it and you went out. Well, this is what me and Johnny were filming for the Johnny and Gene show, right? And I remember I was in the car with Johnny going to the studio. I looked to my right. And it's fucking Blaze Carrazzo looking right at us, <laughs> laughing, looking at him. <laughs> you're kidding. Wow. All yeah. right. So, yeah, you're not, you're not talking about a nobody there. You're, you're talking about a somebody yeah. there. So many. Now, I, let me ask you this. I so I, I'm not going to put their names out there. There's a few of them. No, don't, 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 yeah, don't, 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 um, no, no, no. Yeah. I, I was just asking, like I said. Um, and, and, but what and, are they going to do there? Like, think about it. They're 65 years old, 60 years old. I'm in the best shape of my life. Like, what are you really going to do? You're not shooting me. What are you going to do? Swing at me? I'll beat the shit out of you. Like, what are you really going to do? Like, they're not going to do that. It's not like you got some young. Yeah, if I see maybe someone that's young my age that thinks he's a little tough, he might, he might try to square with me. I mean, who knows? But I didn't see that. Okay. I seen a bunch of dudes that really didn't want to say anything. And, you know, I, I ran into a bunch of people. You know, it's like, whatever. What are you going to do? You know, you're going to tell me why? Because they fucked me over? Like, all right, go ahead. Do what we gotta do. All right, we're, we're just gonna have we're gonna have one or two more questions on on that. Oh, we lost you again. I don't know. We're having a storm here in New York right now, so I don't know if it's if it's us here. Let's let's get Gene back on here. Yeah, we it, it, it may be connection here, Gene, because we're having a bad storm here in New York right now, so uh, it could be on my right. end. Um, we're gonna have a, like one or two more questions on 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 you right now, and then we're just gonna move into like what you're gonna be doing going forward, just like that, and then we'll we'll get ready to wrap it up. Um, so right. right now, like, what's the current state of the of the life like right now? Like, how is the current state? Is it is it weak? Is it strong? Is it underground? Is it uh, how, how what's going on in life right now? I think it's just money. You know, like I said, they're probably still making a ton of money, but there's just no more like, you know, you gotta say stuff. Why would anybody pay you? And I. If, if, they, if they're not scared of you, why would they pay you? You got to look at it like that. So I don't know what's going on, but I know if I'm not scared of someone, why am I paying them? So the fear brings the money. Like, so the mafia is not really fear no more. So who's going to pay them? You know what I mean? They're not, they're not, they're all empty threats. No one's getting shot. No one's getting killed. No one's disappearing like it used to be. So what are you scared of? You know, all right, you owe me 10,000. Well, if you don't pay me, I'm going to do what? You're not going to kill them. Like, what's going on? You know, what's the fear? Okay. Why are they paying all right, that's that's gonna lead into my last basic my my last life question right. here. That's gonna be a here's say for argument's sake, I um I come to you for I, I need I need to borrow a little money from you. I, I borrow ten thousand from you. Right. Okay? Now now I'm I'm paying I'm paying a few points every week until I pay you the ten thousand, right? Right. What if I if I go bad and you come to me and first you say, Hey, listen, Nick, whoop, let's get him uh let's get him back in. Okay. All right. So yeah. yeah. If uh, if if I stop paying, I go bad. Now you're gonna come to my house and you're gonna say, "Hey, Anthony, what what are you doing? What, what, where's my fucking money?" And I tell you, yeah. "Hey, listen, Gene." In my hey, I, in my hey day, in my hey day, if you're doing that to me, I'm gonna wait for you to come outside. I'm gonna hate you with some. You know, I'm honestly, it depends. I'm like, I'll give you a okay. break at first, but if I feel like you're trying to beat me, Ronnie's gonna do the same thing. We're just gonna beat you up. That's usually how we. Okay. Now, it, you know, what I mean? here's the question I want to ask, and, and I want I want you to um. I want you to answer this. If anybody ever pulled this this uh, this strategy with you, hey, you right. know what? I'm no tough guy, but fuck you. I ain't paying you. I'll go to the fucking police. Did you, did you ever hear something like that? Do, do people threaten you with no. that? No. no. Oh, really? No. No, okay. I never heard that. Not, not in how no. we chose on park. I never heard that. Well, no. Okay. Yeah, one I was just had, curious one to guy, see. One guy, one guy had told someone else in my crew he wasn't paying them, and he ended up getting shot. Okay. Cause you know the the reason I the reason I um I bring it up is years ago, uh I used to play fool around to sports. Every, you know I had a guy that I would call up, you know, put some bets in once in a while, and I was I was friendly with the runner, and the runner told me one day that they had a guy who was into them for four or five thousand, and he threatened to go to the police, and their guy just said fuck it, let him go. It didn't cost us no. He didn't take money from us. It was on paper. Yeah, we don't need the headache. Let him go. We never had that. We never had that by us. And I'm going to be honest with you. Ronnie's not getting beat on a dollar. He would send us to, you know, Ronnie's violence. So we were going to do violence to you. That's 100. percent Or destroy something that you own. Or we were coming at you. Yeah. Oh, let me ask you a question. I owe you. I owe you ten thousand, right? I owe you ten grand, and yeah. I say, listen, I'm fucking tapped out. I'm fucking done. I can come up with seventy five hundred. Will I get out? Will I get out with seventy five hundred? Or he wants the whole ten thousand? Yeah. If you've been paying for a while, yeah, he'll allow that. Ronnie. Yeah. He'll, he'll, yeah. Okay. Yeah, if All you're right, paying so, it for like a year or two and you do that, he's cool with that. If you get him like eight thousand yeah, yeah. on ten thousand, 
paying him for a while. He's cool with that. He's, he's cheap, but he understands. Like, all right, yeah, you've been paying me a long time. I'll do that. You know what I mean? Now, how about a, how about a right off the bat? I lose ten thousand to your gamble, and I say, look, I could come up with seventy five hundred right now. That's the best I can do. Will he take it? Or is, uh, is... that depends. Well, if you're on my half sheet, I would have to work that out on my end. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Okay. Yeah. All if right. You're on so... Ronnie's half sheet, like I said, you know, if if I made ten thousand and on on my sheet, and you got you only. You can't pay two grand. I just knock it off my end. You know what I'm saying? That's all. And then you just owe it to me when you can or whatever. Squash it, you know? All right. You didn't, have I have a, tell, I think, you didn't have to tell him about that, you know? I have I have a two-part question, and then we're going to be done with the mob stuff. And we're going to just move into what you're doing now, and then we're going to wrap it up, okay? Right. Okay. So now, here, <laughs> me and you have a beef. You're you're in a, you're an associate. I'm an associate. Whatever we are. Me and you have a beef. Uh, we don't actually get into a physical altercation, but we have, we have a serious altercation where we need to, we need to sit down. Right. Okay? We, we, now, how does the sit down work? Tell me, tell me what, like, now, does it work? Like who, who determines in the family, who's going to sit for you? Like Gene uh, Barello, who's well, going to sit? It depends. Well, it depends. Like, so I would go to Ronnie and it depends who's going to sit for them. If it's a captain, obviously a captain got to go. If it's a wise guy, a wise guy will go. You know what I mean? So it depends on who's going to sit for a regular beef like that. or probably be just a guy you're under. And they'll okay. meet, you know what I'm saying? That's it. And they'll go and they'll squash it at the table. And if you do anything after that, when they tell you not to, then you're gonna get dealt with. So it's the, basically it's the severity of how bad this is and who's sitting down for the other guy. So you you don't want to be right. outdone. Right. You don't want to have this regular soldier. Right. He could be with a captain. He could be, let's say, the guy is on record with a skipper. He could just say, okay, well, then Ronnie isn't a captain at the time. He'll just go to Vinny or Jerry, and then they'll sit down. You know what I'm saying? Or Joe, Joe, whoever's the captain at the time, and then they'll go sit. And then they'll talk it out and see what happens. And then you'll have to wait outside while the sit down's going on. You know what I'm saying? Or whatever. They'll tell you what's going oh, on. Oh, you're not in there? You're not in there when this is going down? You're not, you're not part of this? They, if, they, if they call you in, yeah, you can sit in there. It depends. Yeah, it, you can. You know, sometimes it won't be. If it's captains, I don't think you're going to be in there. You can be. But I don't know. I, I, that's rare. All right. We're going to go into the last question on the on the mob right now. And then we're, we're going to get into what you're doing with yourself now. All right. Sitting, sitting down. How, say for argument's sake, you have two captains in there at the. How are they? What? How are they? How are they gonna fucking mesh this? I don't know. How do they make this work? Who is it? Like you know, you're a captain. I'm a captain. We're in here. How, how do we? Who the fuck wins that? How do? You, how do you win a sit down? Who's right and who's wrong? I mean, you know, there's a lot of things that'll come out. Well, so it's your I word think, against. You know, I, it's your word against my word. I'm, I'm, I'm saying you fuck me, you guys get and a, you're saying you know, I fuck you. you know what I mean? It's, 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 No, don't don't go out on us now, Gene. Don't go now. We're almost done. I gotta tell you, until Gene comes back, this is a very entertaining man right here. This guy is, and I tell you, he is not. Uh, this guy is not ashamed to say anything. This guy telling you how it is, and I don't think there's one thing that this guy just said that I don't believe. I believe every word this man said. Uh, I can I get a good feel for for seeing him. I, I honestly oozes through this guy's. You know, it, it's just oozing out of him. This this guy is, you know, love him or hate him uh, for what he did. He's an informant. You can hate him for that. But but the, the, the guy is, is very honest. The guy, the guy is telling you how it is. Um, and, yeah, we, we've been having issues with his uh, his connection pretty much even before we started. But uh, this is uh, – we're getting ready to get towards the end right now. And I want him to get back in so we can we can wrap this up. Because there's a couple more questions I want uh, you guys to hear about, you know, what he's doing with himself today. And uh, I hope he comes back. Let me see. It's Tim here. I'm going to. All right, I'm going to send him another link. He can't get back in. Hold on one second here. All right, we're sending in the link again. In the meantime...
I got to tell you, this was quite an entertaining um, interview because you get an insight of, I mean, all the stuff that he was talking about is public information. That this was this was in newspapers, this was on the news, this was in a lot of places, you know what I mean? So the stuff that he's telling me is, is not uh, new information, uh, but it could be new information for my viewers. So that's the reason we're, we're doing this. Um, you know, it's a, uh, oh, what do we have in here? He's having an issue coming, coming back. Um, hey, what's up? Hey, all right. So you know what, Dujin? If it doesn't work, I'll just ask you a few questions over the phone, if you don't mind, and then we'll just wrap it up. That. Yeah. I, I, I'm, I'm pretty sure that my, uh, my audience will hear you on, on the speakerphone right now. Um, so, all right. So. Oh, is it? Okay. Hold on. Let's take a look. Oh, there you are. Let's go. All right. There you are. All right. So let's get this, uh, let's get this wrapped up. We'll do We'll wrap this up in the next five minutes and we'll, we'll be on our way here. So let me ask you a few questions now. What's going on with you now? Okay, like what's what's the current status? I, I understand you have some uh, you have a court date coming up. I heard about that bullshit with the football game and your court appearance. You were sick. The, a lot of people are saying that you skipped out yeah. on the on the. So I know you have a uh, an upcoming right. uh, court date. So what what are you what are you can you talk about that or is that something we can't talk about the the current stuff? That's not um, yeah. You can talk about it. I mean, it's just a bunch of trumped up shit. They're just making it sound worse for the judge, and then I get to tell my side, and then he'll decide what he wants to do. They're taking stories and making it sound worse. That's what prosecutors always do. You take a bucket of shit, you throw it against the wall, hope something sticks. That's all they're doing. It's what they do. Because I heard, I heard John one of the other interviews say that there was a gun charge or a threat, and you made a good point saying where the the, the no bar gun. has to be loaded with cameras. The, where, where's the video? They have video. I'm gonna I'm gonna pick that apart, and they know that already. That's not gonna stick at all. They're saying I flashed my shirt, and a dark object was there. First of all, the guy knows who I am that was in the bar. He would just call the cops like he did and say, Gene Brawl had a gun. They'd be at my house with Navy SEALs, kicking the door in with fucking cameras showing I had a pistol and I'd be in jail. I'd never be in the street. This happened in September, supposedly. It's a crock of shit. And I can't wait to talk to the judge about that one. You know, not for nothing. They talk about me lying to a federal judge. I should be charged. They should be charged for lying to a federal judge because they said no one lies. Yeah, they really. They want. They're allowed to lie to a judge because they're doing nothing but lying to a federal judge. So I can't wait to see that and talk about them. They said I was locked up four times. That's a lie. They've been lying like crazy, just lying. Yeah. Now let me ask you: when, when you first came, when you first came out, and you, I mean, you you can ask you and John were doing great with your podcast and stuff like that. Did 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 the feds did they tell you that to get rid of all social media? Like, did you have to delete everything and start over? They hate. They were mad about it. That's what they made. That's what they hate me for the Johnny Gene show. That's why they're my enemy. That's why they're mad. That's so they, they wanted you just. To- to come out and be some regular fucking Joe and not show your face, not talk and just fucking just disappear into the sunset and never hear from Gene Barello again. All they care about is convictions and they felt like I fucked them on convictions of future cases. That's all. That's all they care about. Well, let me ask you this real quick. I'll touch on one more thing. How, how do you feel about like um, with the feds and how like the local police, and how they're doing with organized crime? They are they are dealing a pretty decent blow to organized crime, right? They yeah, are they taking do that. Listen. They do their job. When they're mad at you, they're mad at you. They're going to fuck with you. They're mad at me right now, so they're trying to put me in jail. That's just the way it goes. You know, I know the game. I was on the other, I was on both sides. I see what they do. So, listen, I know what they do. That's it. You're on their radar. I'm on their radar right now because they feel like I do what I want, break rules, all this bullshit. It's really a bunch of petty nonsense that they're making into something this big, into this big. If Judge Block, if they presented all this stuff, why would Judge Block let me stay out all the time? He knows half of it's bullshit. He knows they're exaggerating. He knows that they're 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 making it sound worse. Did I break some viol- Did I break probation rules? Absolutely. I'm going to tell them the rules that I really broke, not the ones that they're saying. All this fucking uh, me being a public risk. How am I a public risk? Who from who? Who who? Wow. How am I out? How does it, how? It doesn't make any sense what they're saying. You know. No. It it, it sounds like they they just have a hard on for you. and That's it right they're now. Basically. Trying- that- 
you gotta understand, my judge is a very fair, understanding guy, but he will do his job. If he feels like I gotta go to jail, he's put my ass in jail. You know what I'm saying? But they know that he's not gonna just throw me in jail because they want him to, like other judges. So they know they gotta present a lot of bullshit to basically make something stick where he goes, all right, he gotta go to jail because they want me in jail so bad. They're pathetic. Let them be pathetic. I don't care. I'll fight it. I go to jail, I go to jail. And I'll be back out and I'm still gonna live better than they do. So what's it matter? Do you do you expect any? Do you expect a few, like maybe a few months or something? Do you expect anything, or you are you are you hope? I, obviously, you're hoping with nothing, but you think that you're, I run, your case. I, I run businesses. I I have a good life out here. I'm not with it. Oh, we lost again. Yeah. So you you run business again. You run businesses. I run businesses. I'm not with that psychopath girl in the mall who's the reason of all of this. Um, I'm with somebody else. You know what I mean? So it's like I could show them, like, Your Honor, Florida's willing to take my case, ending one jurisdiction. So what does New York care so much about me for? It doesn't make any sense. Why are you all over me when Florida's willing to take me and take my case? And what do you want with me so much so bad? What are you trying to prove? What are you trying to make a name for yourself? Because there's no cases in New York right now. Like, what is your problem? So I'm going to present everything to him. And if he wants to put me in, then I go to jail. My worst case is jail. All right. I understand that. Okay. You know? Can it, is, is it serious time? Or are you, are you talking, is it, you think it should be, you know, is it, is it months or is Who it knows? years? You don't know oh, what okay. a federal judge is going to do. You don't know. He could give me two years, three years, three days, house arrest. He could do restart my probation, throw it away. It's whatever he feels. You know what I mean? All right, so you know what? Let's let's tell let's tell the viewers. What, what's I'm going to ask you the same question I asked you earlier. Only it's going to be in current life now. What's a regular day in life for Gene Barello today? You wake up, you take a shower. You where are you going now? Where, like, tell us what you do. I like, go, you going to work? Yeah, I go get an iced coffee and then I go to the wash. I go in and out. I'm running around all day. I really don't uh, like. It's like if they really did were watching me, they would know nothing's going on. That's why I think it's a joke. You know what I mean? Like, who am I a public risk to myself? I'm not even with nobody. Like, it's just so stupid. All my friends are regular squares. Well, they all own businesses. They're all rich people. Like, it doesn't make any sense. They're saying, you know how many letters that I'm getting written to the judge? And they're like, when they read that gangland article, like, this ain't the Gene Bro I'm with all the time. Like, it's fake. You know what I mean? So they just, like, everyone just had it with these people. Like, just get off my dick already, basically. Like, you know? Like, seriously. Get a life. Are you, um, Gene, are you, are you seriously committed to the civilian life? Yeah. I, I'm not wrong, man. They're crying about little stupid, petty things. It's this girl that took me down, this miserable fucking train wreck I dealt with. That's all it was, you know? Yeah, I, I, I heard a little bit about that on your last interview. Um, my, my advice to you is, listen, I know you say you love it, but I, I when when you have a sickness, you got to take something to kill the sickness. You got to get rid of, you know, it's, she's going to bring you down. Yeah, you it, can't, it, you it, can't it, stay it, with her. Listen, I had, to learn, I had to learn the hard way, bro, you know? It is what it is. So let's let's wrap this up here with this last question here. What, what's your goals? Where do you see yourself, Gene, in five years? Are you are you a Florida guy now? Is that where you are? Are you? Yeah, are you... I'm gonna be out. I'm gonna be out in Florida for the rest of my life. That's so Florida is your thing. So you're yeah. you're gonna be a you're gonna be a, an entrepreneur. You're gonna be a, a, a straight laced civilian. You're gonna be on the yeah. on the straight and narrow, and you're gonna make a living. Yeah, and I am. No, I've that's... been doing that, and they're trying to present anything they can to make me look like this bad guy. It's pathetic. You got to see the, the article they wrote. Read it. It's so corny. You're trying to make me sound Gene Barrell and his associates. Like, oh, who? The, my friend that owns a restaurant? My friend that owns a coffee business? Like, what are you talking about? My associates? Like, you sound like a fucking idiot. It's so pathetic. And they know I have a foul mouth, and I don't hold my tongue for nobody. So if they think I'm going to go in there and be a church mouse and let them just lie on me, they got another thing coming. Because I got a lot of stuff to present. A little old Christy Myers calling my girlfriend, begging her for statements to write against me. Yeah, that, I, I, I heard. Hey, girl, I heard you. you're going to write the statement? Hey, girl. I got messages of all her talking shit about Judge Block herself. I can't wait. I really can't wait for court, to be honest with you. Isn't, isn't, isn't that like some, isn't, isn't that a form of entrapment there? Isn't that like a... Um... They don't understand. They're dealing with a mental patient. My ex-girlfriend is a real mental patient. So she's <laughs> friends with Christine Myers one day, the FBI. And then she's back with me and shows me everything she says. So it's like back and forth. I know what they're doing. Well, the case that we have and we built against him is much better. And I've been investigating him for two years. And I, I, I get a life, bro. Spectre Gadget. Like, get out of here. Like, get a life. Get a life. All right. Let, we're going to wrap this up in 60 seconds right now. We're going to we're going to end it off with what are your goals going forward, Gene? Who do you want Gene Barella to be? Like, what, what are you looking to to do going forward now? Like, how do you want to go from now till the end of time? Yeah, I just want to uh, keep going. I want to franchise Auto Spa America. That's our plan. 
Uh, we want to put them all over. I have mobile wash. I got a lot of plans, man. You know, a lot of people that love me and we want to see me do good. I have so many people out here that love me, like regular people, and they just don't understand why they're doing this to me. So, like I said, I hope everything I move forward. I hope New York gets off my dick, these, this, this, this government. I go to Florida, let them take over my case jurisdiction and let me live my life, man. That's it. Just get off my back. Like, just get, just leave me alone. You know, no, that, 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 that's great. Gene. All right, Gene, you got, you got a book. Let's plug the book. Tell people, you know, what's, what's the name of your book? Uh, Born in the Life. Um, it's a bestseller on Amazon already. I sold over 5,000 copies already. I sold over 500 uh, personal copies already. Um, and that's what I advertised it for a year because they took my advertisement away. And um, it's a uh, it's a top seller. It's unheard of for a book to sell like that nowadays for um, for books. So so you say we, we you can you can get it on Amazon. Where else could you get it? Is it in bookstores like in a Barnes and Noble? Can you get it inside of a? It's everywhere. It's yeah. everywhere. Yeah. All right. So if you guys, you know, I, I recommend the book. You know, the guy has a very interesting life. I would definitely tell my viewers to check the book out. And uh, right. Gene, tell the people how did how did they get in touch with you? Uh, social media, email. Um, Gene Barrow, my Instagram, basically, I answer everybody. They know that. My uh, Gene Barrow on Instagram, you know, uh, okay. DM me, I answer. I answer everyone. That's why everyone loves me. I answer everybody. All right. Well, listen, I want to thank you for coming on tonight. I, I wish you luck in, you know, with your court date and stuff like that. And let me ask you a question. Will you come back and let us know, just where we can let the audience know, like, you know, how you made out, you know, in yeah, court and stuff like that? We- yeah, you understand something. I have a lawyer that loves me. Nancy and Essie's been with me for many years. And I have a judge that I'm pretty sure knows that I'm not a bad guy. I have Judge Block. I, I'm very confident that he will see the bullshit in the real. And if he has to put me in jail, I respect him putting me in jail. I will not take a day from those scumbags in that government. I will let him put me in jail for five years before I cop out to one day from them. They could offer me three days tomorrow. I'll tell them to go fuck themselves because they're such liars. But if the judge gives me whatever he gives me, I accept it because I have the utmost respect for him. He's been nothing but good to me. He and, and, and I will not whatever he gives me, I will accept. But I won't take one day. I won't take an hour from them. I won't take an hour community service from them. And Jim, just give just give me two more minutes. I want to touch on something you just said there. It just gave me one last question here. You just said you just said you'll take your time, whatever he gives you, right? You just yeah. said you'll. Okay, what's the difference between that and taking your time on the case that you had that you became an informant? What's the difference now to then? You know, because it it does sound a little contradictory that. Maybe you said, I'll take what I have coming. You could have took what you had coming the first time. It was going to be 6,000 fucking years. I know that. But what, what's the mindset now like that's different? Is it the amount of time that, that's Cause doing I was it? Because I, I was mad at my old friends. Otherwise, you know, that's like, you know, it is what it is. I was mad at them when I got, you know, I was like, fuck them. All right. Everyone's against me. They're all mad at me. All right. Fuck you. What am I standing up for? I got nothing to stand up for. All right. Fuck you. All right. Yeah. Well, hey, listen. Yeah. I I, yeah. I had a great time. I had a great time tonight. I hope you enjoyed yeah. the interview. I I hope that you know every, that the questions were okay for you. And um, yeah. And uh, like I said, I hope I hope to see you. You know, after your court date, come back and give us an update on how you are. I mean, if you're allowed to talk about it, I don't know if you'll be allowed to talk about that. I don't know if that. Yeah. You know, the like I are. said, they could offer me community service tomorrow. The prosecutor, the agents. No. If Judge Block, whatever he gives me, I understand. I respect it. He is a fair. Good guy. The nicest judge you'll ever meet in the country. Very fair guy. The government does not like him themselves because they feel like he's whatever. He's for the people. So they don't like that. They want a robot just going to go, jail, jail, jail. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, that's just the way it goes. And I will go in and explain myself. And if that's what he does, then I go to prison. I come home. I still own multiple businesses. I'm still going to live good. I'm still going to be in Florida. That's fine. I'll just take a little break. That's all. All right? Well, I want to. I want to wish you the best. Awesome. And like I said, you let you let me know. I'll, I'll be in touch with you after your court date. And maybe we come and give an update over here. And uh, I wish you the best. And I have to tell you, I there's some people you get a, a good read for, and some people you don't. Um, whether or not it doesn't make a difference what other people think of you, from listening to what you say, I th- I, I believe every single word you said. I don't think there's one word you said tonight that I can honestly say, I think this guy's stretching the truth. I, I think you were being conservative, to be honest with you. I I think you, you were super listen. fucking honest. Listen, the prosecutors I dealt with in the ages know I tell her how it is. If I tell you I didn't have a gun on me, I didn't have no fucking gun on me. I didn't go in a bar with no gun. That's such bullshit. Okay? You know, I know the things that I did and didn't do. They want to ask you. I didn't get locked up four times. I got locked up once. And the case was thrown away in 13 days because my ex-girlfriend tried to extort me with a fucking cash app. But they don't bring that up. But we're going to bring everything up. You know, Christine Myers in her big case. So, you know, everything's going to be brought up. All right? So I can't wait. The one the one piece of advice I can give you going forward, and then we're going we're gonna to make a night, is... You know, learn, learn how to take a deep breath. You know what I mean? Don't, don't right. react too quick. You know what I mean? Take, right. 
assess the situation first and think, what's the circumstances before I react? Because a quick tempo can get you in a lot of trouble real quick, and you can yeah, regret that. That's what they so, want. I'm just sick of these people picking on me. It's just played out already, you know? That's all. Well, well, listen, I want to thank you. Thanks for coming on. Thanks for giving me your time. And like I said, I'll, I'll be in touch with you after your court appearance, and we'll, we'll do it again. I appreciate it. Thanks, brother. All right. Take care. Take care. All right, so there you have it. You have uh, Gene Barella telling his story. Now, look, um, like I said, I'm not here to judge either side of what happens with you know um, with Gene or or the um, you know the, uh, the the mob. You know, I don't take sides on what it is. I'm just presenting the facts. Um, everything that the man said was public information. Um, he didn't say anything about anybody that wasn't already put out there. And I didn't ask him any questions that would put anybody in jeopardy. We're just basically talking the facts of the, you know, the public information that's, you know, all over the internet. It's all been, you know, um, the interviews that have already been done all over the place, uh, the newspapers, um, everything is out there. Um, I'm a big believer in second chances and I don't want people to think, oh, you know, cause some people will say and use the word rat. And say, oh, all right. no, but here's the here's the thing. The a lot of people are are becoming informants. And look, I'm I'm a big believer in, in second chance, and I think people can change. And you know, time will tell if if Gene changes. Uh, I'm pulling for him. I, I I think he should you know get every opportunity to straighten his life out. And it looks like he's doing that. And the only thing I can see right now from what I'm hearing is he's actually trying to straighten his life out, and other people are trying to bring him down. Like he has the girlfriend, uh, you know, the, the prosecutors, the, they're, they're not the, they're not a fan of the guy. So, you know, um, his past is actually becoming an issue in his present. And this is the collateral damage when you have such a violent past. Uh, but I wish the guy luck. Um, and, and that's it. And I want to thank him for coming on. He, he told a, a, a great story. And I got to give him credit. Um, I asked him beforehand. You know, you let me know what is off limits. What can we and can't we talk about it? And he looked, you know, he just said flat up, and there's nothing we can't talk about. It's all there. Anything you want to talk about, any question, I'll answer it. And I, I can't uh, I, I can't even ask for anything more than that. I mean, he was super honest with, with me here. And um, like I said, the, the story he tells is amazing as far as a guy in that life. And the average civilian like myself and all of you out there, we don't get the insight of what goes on in that in that lifestyle until we see it on the news, in a movie, or on the newspaper, or on a live interview like we just saw. And by that time, it's old information. So um, it, it's refreshing for the viewers to see inside the uh, in, inside the you know inside the uh, the inside workings of of how an associate in in the uh, in the life does their does their uh their daily uh their daily business and it was it was entertaining um i don't think i would have the stones to uh to do what he did uh, i'm happy to be a, a civilian i don't have i don't have that in me to be on either side of the fence there uh, i'm too much of a <laughs> i'm too much of a chicken to do to to do that i'm always worried I'd, I'd be worried about everything i'd be worried about the police i'd be worried about uh you know friends in the life and stuff like that so um I don't pass judgment on on either side. Um, listen, we all are responsible for the actions that we take in life, and no one uh, forces us to go in any direction. We all choose our path, and some people do it for the money, some people do it for the fame, some people don't do it because they are afraid. So we all have our uh, our differences and our indifferences. But um, I want to thank you all for watching, and I hope you guys were entertained by the interview. And I have a few other ones that are lined up on forward. So. Um, I'd like to uh, I like to move this direction now. Uh, as you guys know, I was doing a lot of music reactions on my YouTube channel, and I'm going to get more and more into the interviews like this one here. And uh, you know, if you guys are excited by this, uh, which I think you should, because this is not something that you uh, that you see every day, and you don't hear this story every day. So uh, hey, listen, if you're new here, if you came over. Um, from the mob genre, I mean, hey, hit the subscribe button uh, to my channel. I'm going to be doing more stuff like that. If you like the interview, uh, hit that like button. You know, leave some comments. Talk about talk about what we talked about. Tell me, you know, 
why you liked or didn't like my interview, uh, why you liked Gene or you didn't like Gene or you believe Gene or you didn't believe Gene. Uh, this is for you. You know, this is a um, this is an opinion based um, show here. Uh, I didn't ask him anything that wasn't already public information. We put nobody at, at risk in anything uh, that we spoke about. We talked about Gene's crimes. We didn't talk about anybody that's uh, currently doing anything. Uh, I didn't ask the questions and Gene didn't offer. So it was pretty much of a of a mutual thing there. So um, I think we covered all the bases here. So I'm going to sign off for now. And um, like I said, if you're new to my channel, Hey, hit that subscribe button, hit that like button, leave a comment, and I appreciate you guys coming. You guys have a great day, and I'll talk to you guys soon. Peace. So that's it.